Hey guys, we're going to do some bread and butter pickles today, but we're going to try it in an entirely different way that I suspect you may not even know exists. We're following the recipe from the USDA's book. I know this is all online, but I wanted to have a book just in case I ever lose online capabilities, you know, SHTF, whatever lines go down. I still want to be able to make my bread and butter pickles and whatever else I have. I've got the ball books and I've got this book and I think that's all I need. All right, so yada, 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 get your cucumbers, cut them up, blah, blah, blah. And then use a low temperature pasteurization treatment described on page six, five, or just chapter six, page five. So when we usually make pickles, right, we put them into like a hot water bath or a steam canner. We boil them away, put them on a shelf. We take them out of the, off the shelf in six months and eat them and, blech, right? Mushy. But we love pickles, so we eat them. But if we do this low temperature pasteurization treatment, we're only going to heat the water up to between 180 and 185 Fahrenheit. I'll put the translation to that. I need to centigrade down below. So we heat it up to one below boiling, just right, you know, right before the water boils, just when those little tiny bubbles are at the bottom, that's about the temperature we're going to get. And we have to do it for 30 minutes. Or we could water bath it for 10 minutes. But I don't want to boil the hell out of my cucumbers. I want to see if this is going to result in a crisper pickle. So I'm going to give it a shot, and you're going to come along with me. First, I have to measure my cucumbers, see if I've got six pounds. Eight cups of onions, pickling salt, I just use kosher salt. Got the vinegar, got the sugar, got the mustard, celery, turmeric. It makes a beautiful color. One cup pickling lime. I just ordered some. I've never used it before. If it gets here, I'll use it. If it doesn't, I won't. So i got to do all this stuff, so we'll do it together. But one thing I wanted to point out to you, because I just think it's freaking hilarious. Cut your cucumbers into three sixteenths of an inch. You're supposed to do that. <laughs> Three sixteenths. Yeah, I'm going to go for a quarter inch. I mean, isn't that... Yeah, you know what I mean. All right, I'm going to find my mandolin. We're going to do some weights and figure out how many cucumbers we have. And yada, yada, yada. Let's go forward. Okay, hold on. Okay, so for this recipe, we need six pounds, roughly, of cucumbers. If I have more or less, then I'll adjust the recipe up or down. We've done this a gazillion times. Um, we're going to measure in poundage today. So that's just ounces. I'm going to go for the full pounds. And look at those beautiful cucumbers. I've been saving them for a week. That one actually doesn't fall within the realm of the four to six inch. Well, I don't know. Who knows? We may have to use it. We may not. But I've also been fermenting huh? since day one when I've gotten cucumbers. I've been fermenting them because they're awesome and that's a real dill pickle. You ever, ever want to have a real kosher dill pickle like deli kosher dill pickle? It's not made with vinegar baby it's fermented. I think we're gonna have plenty of cucumbers here. Five pounds. Got some babies here throw those in although you know I'm gonna keep those out. I might ferment those. How about we try the bad, bad boy? 15-3 which is 2.1 ounces. 16.2, perfecto, we like it. I'm gonna save those and maybe I'll just throw them in that ferment right there, who knows. All right, so now I gotta clean these. And uh, yeah, I gotta find my onions, hold on. So unfortunately, it's been a weird gardening year and I'm sure it's been for you too, just because it's, I don't know, it rained here, it was got warm really late and then it rained a ton. Anyway, my uh, comment about that is because I am unable to use my own onions because mine are still on the ground. 
and even then they're they're not nowhere they're not nowhere <laughs> they're not anywhere big enough I need three pounds of onions so I went to my local uh, produce market and bought these I've got a farmer that lives near me where I buy a lot of uh, things like I just did a green bean episode I bought the green beans from her and her farm it's called Margie's and it's in Aurora Oregon and it, beautiful green beans but these um, they didn't have any onions my onions aren't ready so onions in this area just aren't ready but I went up to uh, a small town near us and went to the Mexican produce uh, purveyor and bam half the price from the supermarket and they're organic all right let's get to chopping can't afford to I buy the highest quality equipment I can afford because it lasts forever and this is a Borner it's probably Borner German mandolin this thing is sh sh sharp it's got a blade set right there and you can pull out this thing and uh, make it different thicknesses with uh, the insert in it's 3.5 millimeters which is about 0.15 of an inch 7 millimeters is uh, just right around a quarter of an inch so we are going to uh, put this in the lower setting and there we go slice away on our cucumbers I'm gonna do and the onions so what I need to do is slice these all down and then I need to put them into a large container cover them with ice and let them um, sit in the refrigerator for three to four hours topped off with the salt so they can drain so the first thing I'm gonna do is a few test slices to make sure that uh, this is still functioning correctly um, I should also point out this comes in like this kind of kit thing and um, yeah I paid for this with my own money that it's got like a julienne and a big fat julienne thing in there it all just kind of goes together and then you've got the safety blade with the little holes to grip on it so you don't cut your hands off but I also have some Kevlar gloves I'm gonna grab those so I just peeled an onion I was think, reflecting on when I bought this, and I actually think I bought it just to do bread and butter pickles. It would have been, I don't know how many years ago. I've had it for at least a decade, I think. All right, Kevlar. Butchers wear these. I wear these. You should wear these. What does that say? Optimal comfort. Knife resistant. So to begin, I'm not going to use this. I know, I know. Just going to do three. See how easy that was? And I'm going to take a look. And this, uh, hmm. I wonder if we should measure that. Hold on. This doesn't seem quite right to me. Does it to you? Let's see. No way. That it, there's no way that that is a quarter of an inch. So I took a look at my trusty Bonnell. I wish I could speak German. And I realized I gotta flip this thing over. That seems more like it. Which also, of course, makes it more dangerous. Make sure your counter's clean. All right. Let's get back to some more. Cut a few more. So cut and test, right? That's what lessons we're learning here. Cut and test, cut and test, and that, my friends, looks more like a quarter of an inch. Sweet! Alright, so I'm going to rip through these onions really quickly, and uh, then I shall go on to the cucumbers, and we are going to add them into this bowl, which we will then top with salt and ice and put in a cold environ for three to four hours. Hi you guys. Well that took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but look, I mean, that's a lot. So, 
All okay, right. So the next step is half a cup of canning or pickling salt. That's what I'm using. Just make sure you use the stuff that's not the non-caking. Um, canning and pickling salt is a pretty pure salt. It doesn't have any of the non-caking agents. Doesn't have iodine in it. Doesn't have whatever. Whatever people put in stuff this day, these days. So you can use any kind of a salt that is similarly pure. So you could use sea salt or kosher salt or Himalayan pink salt. So what happens if you use um, regular table salt, your pickles, in this case pickles or whatever your canning can get cloudy. That's it. They'll just get cloudy or potentially get cloudy. So um, it's not a big deal. Everything seems to get cloudy. Oh, geez, jumpers. All right, so now I've got this salt on top. All right, so we've got this salt mixed. It's not on top, like I just said. I mixed it all in there. Then you're supposed to cover it with a couple inches of ice. Uh, the loudness. And then pop it in the fridge. And what's going to happen is that, of course, this is going to stay cool. And the, uh, a lot of the extra liquid in the onions, and especially the cucumbers, because you know those are really salty, it's going to, you know, drain, right, drain to the bottom of the bowl. And then in uh, three or four hours when we bring this out, we're going to drain that off. So it's not going to become part of our uh, pickled cucumbers, our bread and butter cucumbers. So now i got to find a fridge big enough to hold this, luckily. You may remember I converted a freezer into a refrigerator out in the garage, so we're going to go put this in there. All right, so here's that freezer we converted into refrigerator. I have two of these small ones. That big, huge freezer is still a freezer. If you want that video, um, you can look it up on my webpage. Really easy to do. You just have to change out the um, temperature adapter bite off Amazon. All right, so I got to look in here a few times an hour and make sure that there's still ice in here. If there's not, I've got to add more. But whilst that is cooling away, let us prepare the brine. All righty, so here we go with our brine. So we already put the salt on the cucumbers and the onions. So now we've got four cups of 5% white vinegar. Again, I don't know why they call it white when it's obviously clear. Move you over here. Four cups. Two tablespoons mustard seed. One and a half tablespoons celery seed. One tablespoon grand turmeric or turmeric, however you like to pronounce it. And check it out. Four and a half cups sugar. Now, so too much brine shouldn't be going into each jar, so it's not going to be horrible bad, but this is a pretty sweet uh, mixture. So we're going to go ahead and bring this up to the boil. It's a good stir. So this is less, I would say, less like a brine because it's got no salt in it. And um, a more like a syrup, a vinegar syrup. I have not seen a request for any water yet. Just kind of interesting. But um, we shall see how it goes. We'll take a taste test of this after it gets all happy together. So, uh, yeah, when it comes up to the boil and uh, the onions and cukes are done, we'll come back and take a look at it. So I added up all of our ingredients and we're looking at about, what, six pounds of cukes, three pounds of eight, six, seven, eight, nine pounds altogether of vegetables, which means it's going to make about, uh, I'm going to do some pints and some quarts. So each quart holds about two pounds, so four quarts, two, four, four, six, eight, that'd be eight, plus a pint or a pint and a half. So we're going to do quarts and pints and uh, yeah. Stick around, we'll be back in a little bit. All right, it's been about four hours, and now we've taken this out of the fridge. I actually had to 
remove a bunch of ice over there. But we're going to just let this strain. Get all that water out of there. And I think I'm going to take a different approach to canning these, actually putting them into the jars. I'm supposed to take this and put it into the boiling brine mixture, mix it up, and then add it into the jars for canning. But I have done that several times before, and it's not easy to get a packed jar full when you're using a ladle, because you can't put your hand in there, right? It's so hot. And I just watched a video from the American Test Kitchen, and this is what they did. They strained it, let it get semi-room temperature-ish, used a warm jar instead of a hot jar, packed it full, put the brine in, and then took it out to pasteurization. Now, if you were water bath canning this, you would only process it for 10 minutes, so I can see why you would need this hot going into the jar. But um, with the pasteurization, we're going to actually process it for 30 minutes. So I think this is going to work just fine. We'll find out if it doesn't work just fine. So now I'm just going to let this uh, warm up a little bit. My jars are just finishing up, and we're bringing the brine back up to temperature. All right, you guys, so I've got a couple jars out and already packed, and you can see I got a lot in here because I was able to stuff everything in there and then really reef down on it a little bit, you know, to get everything in there nice and secure. And I'm supposed to leave a half an inch of headspace, so we'll see what happens when I add in our brine, which I have right over here. So let's take a look. Well, that happens. Isn't that beautiful? A lot easier than trying to do this from the pot. But again, I want to make sure to remind you I'm veering from the official recipe. Although this is how American Test Kitchen did it. I'll link that video below just for fun. So that looks pretty good. Let me just get in here, do some debubbling, and that's just to get the trapped air out that's in there in between items. And you'll see that the uh, amount of brine in here suddenly looks like it's less because those air pockets get out of there and uh, the brine can get into those spaces and fill them up lower. This doesn't have to be perfect. They sell a tool for this, but I find a chopstick works just fine. So, I'm going to up it again just about half an inch. That's right about where this second screw on thing, what do you call a screw on thing, Stan? The screw on thing for what? Tops of jars. But the, the rings? Not the rings, the. Uh, <laughs> we don't know do what they're called. Do we they think. Have a we are. Yeah. We're going to call them ridges. Uh, what, what's that tool you use to make, like if a screw goes bad and you put new rings on it? Threads. Threads. Okay. They're threads. <laughs> this, is, this is real life, people. You can't make this shit up. Okay, so I've got some rings and stuff over here. Lids, rings. So what I did there is I just um, took a paper toweling with some vinegar on it and made sure that the, none of the sticky brine was on the top, the jar. So now I'm gonna take these and take them outside, but um, I'm gonna fill up these two before we do that, and then we'll meet outside. you guys so I ended up with four large two small and then actually half of another small but I'm just gonna make that into a refrigerator pickle so I've got my flame on you can see that down there we're using the steam water bath canner as our um, pasteurization vessel I've got this candy thermometer which says actually it's about one 40 or so, so we're going to rank that up in a little bit. But I've been testing this Thermoworks. It's a barbecue thermometer, and it's great. Um, unfortunately, the device and this braided cording is not waterproof. 
you know, 135. It is an instant read though, down to the second, and um, I'm okay putting that in and out. I can leave the other one in and uh, fool around with the temperature from there. But because, remember, these cucumbers weren't ice cold, or they weren't hot, excuse me, when I put them in these vessels, I did decide to rinse them with, um, I rinsed a little of the salt off, don't kill me. I rinsed some of the salt off, and uh, I did that with warm water. So I warmed them up a little bit. And now I'm, I've got the rack up. Your enamel canner, the rack will do the same thing. This is a way to he uh, cool heat up things, geez, heat up cold things before you put them into the canner. I'm going to use this because I think we're going to get a little overflowage here with my fight tops. Um, pints and quartz process at the same time during this pasteurization technique. I think I'm going to get some water overflowage when we do this, but we shall see. So I'm going to go ahead and slowly add this into the water. Pretty sure we're going to get some overflow here. You know what? I'm going to take some water out. I can always put it back in, right? Okay, hold on. All right, I guess that looks better. Does it? Now I need a towel. Hold on. One thing about canning I think that scares people, especially when they watch videos of mine, is that I'm constantly changing things or realizing I did something wrong. Um, which means you have to think on your feet, like that jar. See that one in there? Just fell over. Oh my gosh! The jar fell over. The world's ending. Or I can just straighten it back up. There we go. And it's really, you know, you do have to think on your feet, right? You have to think on your feet for a number of things. And uh, the key is just not to get scared about it. On 52. All right, we'll start timing when we get into the range. Um, a pot with a lid on it, obviously, comes to temperature. Mas despacio. Not well, slower. Faster. Mas rápido. Faster. So we're going to not put that candy thermometer on the outside because it's blocking stuff. So I'm going to put that on there. Put the candy thermometer in there. And, uh, yeah, we're going to keep an eye on this bad boy and watch it. All right, so we're right at 179. So I'm going to try to start regulating this. It's going to go up to one, uh, it's at 180 right now. So I'm going to start trying to keep it between 180, 180 and 185. I'm going to start my timer. What happens if it goes over 185? I don't think that's such a big deal, do you? I think if it goes under, then you know we've got Ill, a problem. But um, I don't see a problem with going a little bit over. However, you know, let's stick with the rules as much as we can. Um, again, this is that new thermometer I was trying out. And one of the reasons I love it is because working on a ceiling fan here, um, I've got its mate over here, 181. So if it goes above 184, I've got it set to beep at me. But I can just look up from my open laptop and check the temperature or go all the way over here and check it. So yeah, if uh, something falls apart, I'll come back and talk to you. Otherwise, let this proceed and we'll come back when they're done. All right, friends. So we're at the end of our 30 minutes. You'll see I had to make some adjustments, but we maintained 180 to 185 perfectly. Uh, I actually had to remove the lid because it got it bounced to 186. I came over, I took off the lid, I blew on it, and it went right down uh, to 185. And then um, my beeper started beeping again, so I came over and I just removed the lid. I turned it down to the lowest setting it would go, and then I discovered that by the on light, there's actually a warm function. So I turned it all the way to warm. And here we go. We did it. Woo All right. So traditionally, I leave, uh, after my canning is done, I leave everything in the pot with the lid on it for a little while to kind of uh, let the temperature go down. And then I remove the jar. So 
why mess with tradition? So I'm going to give it five minutes. Alrighty. Let's see what we have. I'm just going to lift this up to the sides of the canner. I know you see this water on top, don't you? And you're going to want to lift it up and tilt that jar to get that water off, but you're going to resist. Resist. You can break a seal doing that. And you just work so hard on doing all this, so don't do it. All right, let me bust these out real quick and we'll take a talk. We'll take a talk, we'll take a peek and have a talk. All right, so we've got our jars out. Let's take a look at them and take our handy dandy towel. Sealed. Now, this is my first time doing these um, pasteurization. I don't think that's sealed yet. That one's not sealed. No, 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 no. <laughs> One sealed so far, but you know, let's give it some time. Let's uh, check back in uh, maybe tonight, tomorrow morning, and we'll see how it goes. But right now, only that one is sealed. So we'll see. Hey guys, so it's the next morning, and I can tell you that all of these actually sealed within about an hour. Getting pulled out. So, yay! We'll open them up in a few weeks, maybe one in a few weeks, and see how they taste and if this is the way to go with um, pickles. We'll try some bigger maybe like a dill type pickle you know I like to ferment mine but let's give some pickling a try just to see so I'm going to label and put away into the storage and then we'll go on to the next project. Isn't it beautiful? Alright let me know if you have any questions.